Ladies and gentlemen, esteemed viewers of The Adult Potato, welcome back to our studio after what felt like an eternity in the wilderness of remote broadcasting. Our sincerest apologies for the delay. We were waiting for Chad to finish his latest interpretive dance routine about the perils of eating too many bagels. Let's hope he doesn't go all New Yorker on us. Now, before we dive into the zany world of satire and absurdity, it's essential to address the legalities, as tedious as they may be. So, here's our legal disclaimer, brought to you with a wink and a potato-shaped grin. Disclaimer, The Adult Potato is a satirical news show, carefully designed to tickle your funny bone while poking fun at everything and everyone. Our aim is not to offend, but if we accidentally do, please remember, it's all in the name of good-natured ribbing. We promise not to take ourselves too seriously, and we kindly request that you don't either. Any resemblance to actual news is purely coincidental, and any political figures parodied here are purely a product of our overactive imaginations. Remember, laughter is the best seasoning for life. Sprinkle it liberally. And now, without further ado, let's meet Chad, our new anchor, who we sincerely hope will keep his New Yorker tendencies in check. Welcome to another episode of The Adult Potato. I'm Fiona Tater. And I'm Chadwick Peel. I just moved here from New York City, but don't be intimidated. I put my Balenciagas on one leg at a time, just like you. Well, I mean, you obviously don't wear Balenciagas, but whatever pants you people wear. Trish! What the hell was that? I was just engaging with the audience. You're about to engage with my fist. Stick to the script. And we're back. Sorry about that. We had a small technical difficulty. Shout out to Mother Nature for waiting until after dinner to start the heavier snow Thanksgiving night. The roads were slicker than cow snot during the day Saturday, but that may have helped to keep some people shopping in Wellington for small business Saturday instead of heading out to Fort Collins or Windsor. So we'll let that one slide. In my first taste of small-town government in action, I reviewed the video for the Board of Trustees meeting Tuesday night where the water rate increase passed with a 4-2 vote. Trustee McDonald was not present. Trustees Teets and Gator voted no. Mind you that the Board of Trustees has known about the Enterprise Fund increase since the rate restructure a year ago when a community roundtable was formed to help create the foundation of the rate structure, and a consultant worked with staff to come up with the actual rates. In that rate, restructure, Ordinance 16-2022, which was approved unanimously by the Board of Trustees on November 8th of last year, increases were spelled out on page 29 of 138 in the packet this way. Increase rate revenue in the water and wastewater enterprise funds by 5% each year for the next five years to match the cost of service. Additionally, they also approved Ordinance 17-2022 that night, with one vote against by Trustee Daly, where the ordinance states, whereas the fees for utility services are to be reviewed and set annually in order for the town to recoup the full cost of service for the provision of water and wastewater services. Which means that each year they're going to tally up the costs and redistribute them so that everyone pays their share. Now, the operating costs don't care if you use the water or not. Most of those are going to remain the same because the plant has to keep running whether you're using the water or not. But in a particularly rainy year, where the use of water for irrigation was way down, the town didn't get the revenue that they historically get. And that revenue is needed to pay salaries and other operating costs. And that's part of 17-2022 and 16-2022 to increase rate revenue to match the cost of service and set annually the fees in order for the town to recoup the full cost of service. 
So they approved the increase a year ago, and when it came to formalizing the increase this year, two of the trustees that voted yes last year voted no for the same thing this year. Get used to it, Chadwick. Gaslighting is a thing here. Additionally, there was a lot of talk about not approving a cost of living adjustment for the staff because of the rate hike, basically punishing the staff because of a rate hike that the trustees had approved the prior year. The cost of living increase has nothing to do with the ordinance that passed on Tuesday. That was settled a year ago and for the next four years. Those discussions should and will take place at the budget meeting, the appropriate venue for the topic, rather than tying it to a rate increase that had already been approved in a 2022 ordinance. We would like to take this opportunity to mention the town's Hardship Utility Grant, also known as HUG. If you are having trouble paying your water bill, please contact the town. You can download the Hardship Utility Grant application on the town's website. Applications are also available in person at Wellington Town Hall. The application must be submitted in person to Wellington Town Hall, along with documentation to verify the hardship. Please do not stop paying your bill, but reach out to the town to get the process in place. The Hardship Utility Grant can be as much as $300. If you need help, please take advantage of this. Everyone knows that our water rates are high. There's no shame in getting some help to level that playing field. Speaking of the Board of Trustees, there will be a candidate information session for anyone considering running for the three trustee positions that will be open for the April election. The meeting will be held at 5 p.m. on December 4th at the Leaper Center. Nomination petitions need to be turned in between January 2nd and the 22nd to be on the ballot for the April election. Maybe there should be some sort of prerequisite for the trustee position, like a memory test. In other town news, at the time of writing this episode, the Fire District Board is either out of compliance with its bylaws or their transparency promise is worthless. Since neither the October nor November minutes are on the website, let alone recordings of the meetings, we cannot verify if the board has appointed a board member to replace Jason Mayers. Per the bylaws, one must be appointed within 60 days. But does that really surprise anyone? They're more concerned about taking away the pension of those that risked life and limb when we were a volunteer department than bringing on a stooge to rubber stamp their attempts to bankrupt the department. And finally, information on some local events for Saturday, December 9th. First off is Sparge Toberfest's Christmas Cookie Challenge at Sparge Brewery on the 9th from noon to 3. Apparently, they're searching for talented bakers to showcase their delicious cookies or candy for the community and to help raise money for the Sparge Toberfest Foundation. It doesn't cost anything to enter your holiday treat. If you choose to donate your handmade cookies or candy, you will need to provide five cookies for the judges and two dozen or more to sell to the public. There will be five categories for prizes. You can also just show up and taste test the entries. Each cookie or candy will be sold for $1, and all funds will go to the Sparge Toberfest Foundation. That's actually pretty cheap. You can't even get a bagel for a buck in Manhattan. There are some perks to small town living. And home-baked goods is a big one. The Wellington Manor is also having an event on the 9th. In addition to the last fall farmer's market of the year, they're sponsoring a holiday gift day and pictures with Santa himself. Be sure to head over there and check it out. That's it for this episode. Remember that Chadwick Peel has been your beacon of truth in a sea of mediocrity. Chadwick out. Trish. People, just lock your doors. Chadwick in my office. Now.